This is Sean Sport in podcast form. Oh yes, there they are, oh. the West Coast Eagles now. It's been my a while heart. since you heard that song. It stirs my heart. Wow, we're very lucky actually this morning to have West Coast Eagles CEO Don Pike. Uh, he's been in the hot seat for about a year now. And Jesus, there's been some changes. Bringing in the changes. Pikey, good morning. Good morning, guys. How are we doing? Good, mate. It's, yeah, has it been over a year or is it about a year since you've taken over the gig? No, it's actually only been just over nine months, to be oh, honest. Oh. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, started in in the middle of January, and here we are, sort of middle of October, and you know through the first sort of trade period, and now into the draft, and um, obviously with some some changes happening at the at the club, both sort of on and off the field. So uh, exciting times, but uh, enjoying my time in the chair. Yeah, no doubt. But you've come in straight away, and mm. you've ha- you, <clears throat> there needed to be change, and there's a lot to get through. So you of made co- it all. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Well, you might as well get it out the way in one go there, Pikey, because you've got um, uh, obviously Adam moving on. There's been a lot of change. John Warsfold now just been announced coming back to the club. List changes, 10 so far that we've seen. There's been a lot to get through. Yeah, look, it's, it, it was probably always going to be the case that, um, you know, you come on board. We haven't, I mean, obviously haven't performed anywhere near the level we'd like to. Um, and, we, you know, the time sort of with, with Adam moving on and the ability to sort of refresh our footy department, get some, some, some fresh eyes on it. Um, obviously, the appointment of Andrew McQualter as a senior coach was significant. And as you say, John Worsfold coming on board to sort of head, head a footy role, which will oversee our three programs, um, you know, both our AFL, our, our women's and our waffle program to really... Yeah, you know, provide that level of experience across there to get us back you know, playing in finals, which is what we're aspiring to do. Yeah, definitely. Now, Pikey, um, you of course have been a senior coach yourself. What's what's harder, coaching or being CEO? Oh, it's probably a bit early to say at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know it. I know it takes more uh, more time because it's a bigger. It, it, I mean, I guess the one thing that's not so much surprised me, but when you get into the job of a CEO and you, you're across, uh, sort of for a start, meeting all of the, the significant stakeholders, and that's mm. everyone from you know, the people who are running off the stadium to the government, you know, people to the WA Footy Commission to obviously our sponsors and our coteries. And, you know, then, you know there's just everywhere you turn, <laughs> yeah. there's someone that sort of wants a piece of you to do something. And, and coaching is actually a little easier because you're focused on one core group and you're basically managing players and managing, you know, how you want to play and coaching that and training it. So uh, it's different skills, but that's one of the, that was one of the, the challenges mm. I was really up for having done the coaching was to go, well, let's try something different. And, um, I've jumped in, so I jumped into the deep end at the CEO level, which has been it's been great fun. Have many have many people made that transition from coach to CEO? No, I don't know that many have Neil done Barr? that. To be honest, was he a CEO? No, he wasn't a CEO. He was a football manager. I don't know if he's a CEO. No. Yeah, sort of. Yeah, it's an interesting path. I mean, this time last year I was an assistant coach at Sydney. Yeah. Here I am now <laughs> running the Eagles. So it's a bit of a change, but I guess my my journey through footy's been up and down. Oh, not up and down, but more in and out in terms of yeah. being into business and out again. So. It's uh, yeah, it sort of combines all the all the skills and everything I've learned over my time in in footy and business. So yeah, it's um, it's a challenge, but uh, one I'm enjoying. And clearly, one of your um, greatest moments is when you're down at the Dockers, obviously, when we're working together at some stage. <laughs> <laughs> I had, my, I had my little period there work with Chris Conley down there. I was, I was doing some some coaching, sort of consulting to Chris in his in his unfortunately in his final year. So that was the. Uh, yeah, no, we crossed paths for a while there, Sean. Mate, you should have stuck around because he uh, he <laughs> drove me up the wall. <laughs> I would have loved for you to have coached me there, Pikey. <laughs> I was telling Nat actually before uh, you came on that uh, we played in a golf day um, last Friday and you hit a mean ball, so you took out second place mm. in the competition. Yeah, yeah. Not bad. Yeah, well, it was at my local course. So I'm, I've been a member up at Cottesloe for a long time and, um, yeah, and Gary Johnson was running the, the charity yep. day for, for blood cancer and so we... As you know, we got a, a crew of guys together, both Barrio guys and West Coast guys, and had a good afternoon. And, and he, did ama- he did an amazing job. I mean, he raised over two hundred fifty thousand, which was wow. just incredible. So it was it was great to be part of the day and support Gary and, uh, and raise some money. Yeah, were you surprised that I was allowed back after six years? You might have heard Goss say that I, I had been on the suspended list from mm. the Cottesloe Golf Club. Yeah, I think six years is a fair penance to pay. I would no, he was yeah, really I, bad, though, Pikey. He was really bad. So the crime, I don't know if he has done the, done the time for the crime, you know? Well, I, don't, I, don't know about, I don't know about the membership base, where it sits, how much it's Eagles and Dockers. I think it's a reasonably even split, but um, 
obviously the crime was, was significant and so therefore you yeah. had to do the time. So it, we, they've let you back in. It was way worse in. than just being a docker, put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I will say, though, I, Ashley McIntosh, your former teammate, so he took out yeah. first prize with his group and the first prize was a mm. pair of Callaway golf clubs, which is what an amazing a pair, prize. A set. A set, sorry. An entire set. set. So, For everybody in the team. Yes, and, and just I'll yeah. flip it back to Don, first of all, who won a putter, Odyssey putter, which they're worth a lot of money, mm. and he gave it back to raise money for blood cancer oh, and donate a, it. Oh, so that's you're a good that's bloke, perfect. Pikey. So Ash Mack is not short of a dollar, and he does have many pairs of golf clubs. I would have thought sets. sets. <laughs> and he didn't. There was no way he was giving his golf clubs up to be um, uh, re-auctioned off. there. Oh well, I don't know in Ash's situation. I, mean, I, he, I think he's got a young fellow because he obviously lives right yeah. near the course. Yeah. So I don't know whether he was going to. Um, He's going to re-gift them through to his young fellow who I know is taking up the game. So I can assume that was maybe his uh, his motive there. Okay, okay. Oh, we'll you're backing him, him in. You're okay. backing him in. Cut, cut him some slack. <laughs> hey, Pike, one of the things everyone was talking about in that trade period was they thought you gave up too much. I'd imagine, mm. we, I don't want to go back to that part, but I would okay. imagine before the um, draft takes place that you would be looking to get in back into the draft, and I'm only thinking that, you know, Richmond have got a lot of picks up their sleeve that you may be able to get rid of a couple of futures to be able to, you know, get a couple of picks off them, maybe to participate more in this year's draft? Yeah, that's certainly something we're looking at, and obviously you've got to work with the clubs who have got the majority of picks, Richmond being one of them. There's a couple mm. of others who've got some some late first-round picks, which we sort of probably look at as well and say, well, is there an opportunity to use some of the currency we got out of the Barras deal back in? Um, but we're also mindful of, you know, the reality for us keeping, you know, two first round picks next year is, is valuable as well. So, I mean, I know people were, you know, and again, it's without going back over it, yeah. you know, we're sort of from a list build viewpoint, you know, the importance of bringing in the guys we did. And I talk about, you know, Baker, Graham and Owies actually just solidify our, our, our mid tier players and our that mid, mid age bracket players. Um, was all was all part of actually trying to you know assist with the rebuild. So we'll get we'll get some good young talent into the picks we've got, um, and as you say, hopefully we can use some of those those future picks to uh, to leverage ourselves back into this year's you know, high end of the draft. Well, I think everyone in WA is aware of Chad Warner will be out of contract mm. next year, and both clubs, Freeman on the West Coast, will be trying to get their hands on him. Now that you've been a CEO, and of course when you're a coach, are you surprised at the level of movement of players these days? Contracted and how, players, yeah, is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and how much work is done. It seems like the player that you're looking to get, the work's done a year before, and they have to play out a season with their current team, and then... They come over and join you. Yeah, you certainly are. You know, sort of uh, sowing seeds earlier than you ever have. I think, and and you're right. The un- the contracts of players who are moving now. So I think there was four or five this year who still had maybe even six had years to go on contracts. So you know, it's, the interesting part is the free agency. I think has opened that up. That you know, people now feel like the movement is is more accepted. Mm-hmm. We know that in international sport, that's very much the case. Yep. Whether it's NFL, NBA's, EPLs, these these guys are moving. They're sort of contractors to hire. Um, our rules are a little bit different, though, because you've got, you know, you've only, you've only got, so it's a one-way transaction. The player will say, I want to go to here. The clubs don't have the right to trade without authority. So it's, mm. it's a little bit it's a little bit different. Um, and I'm not sure the model's actually completely right, because if you're trying to build a list and you're saying, well, I want to, I want to contract Sean McManus for six years, because um, he's going to be pivotal about it. Said no field. one ever. Yeah. Keep going. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was using an example of that. <laughs> I wasn't going to jump in and stop him. I thought, that sounds all right. It was, a, it was a hypothetical. I didn't say what we were going to pay him. I just said six years. Sorry, keep going, keep going. If we're, going, if we're going. building a midfield around you and then all of a sudden two years in, you say, well, yeah. I'm, I'm moving, I want to move elsewhere, the whole list build strategy gets thrown yeah. up in there. So it's, it's always a, it's a challenging one, and I understand why players do want to move, move clubs and yeah. um, all those sorts of things, but it's it's not as, not as straightforward. I know the NRL is very different because the NRL, yeah. you will sign – a contract yeah. for another club, play the season with your club and just move over. And that's it's sort mind-boggling, of just isn't it? Accepted, just accepted that that's how it works. But they also have a rule, which is you can't talk to a player um, before he enters the last year of his contract. Mm. So yeah, you, right. you're seeing, you don't see guys leave with multiple years on contracts. So the contract's mm. more honoured from the club viewpoint. Yeah. Um, whereas here we're seeing guys move with, with multiple years still left mm. on contract. Um, before we let you go, Pikey, um, how many people have you appointed to the Keep Harley Reid in Perth committee? Working hard there. <laughs> well, it's. Yeah, the, I, thought, it was, I, I thought I was going to get to an interview without a, com, a question on Don't the be whole ridiculous. Time, <laughs> come on. Uh. One in late. Yeah, we've got a call from the West Australian. They yeah. just text us. Make sure you ask this one. 
Nah, nah, look, he's, look, he, he's, yeah, he moved across last year. It'll be, it'll be easy for him again this year because the second year in, yep. um, yeah. yeah, he knows what the cape is about. Um, it's really important for us that we just make him, you know, we, we help him a, improve yeah. his footy and get him, you know, to playing even better than he was last year more consistently. And we build those, those habits around that. Um, and then create an environment for him that he wants to be part of. And that's, that's on us to do that and, mm. and the club to provide that. And then if, if we do that and, um, he, he he's got his mates at the footy club, then the rest of it sort yeah. of takes care of itself. So, you know, we haven't got a committee per se, but um, <laughs> yeah, we're, um, <laughs> we're looking after him. Let's, let's just say yeah, that. Yeah, right. no doubt. Yeah, yeah, we'll read between the lines. All right, thanks, Pikey. Love thanks, your work, Don. mate. Have a great day. Thanks, guys. See you, mate. Cheers. Bye. Sean Sport in podcast form. In the news nice. yesterday and on the front back page of today's paper, you'll see that the Indigenous All-Stars game yes. is going to be centrepiece for WA next so year. So this is a pre-season match where they'll be taking on the Fremantle Dockers, right? Yeah. First of all, February 15th. I know. Oh, hot. Imagine how hot. hot it's going to be at a Hopter Stadium. At Hopter Stadium. Hopter Stadium. <laughs> like, that's going to be just, I mean, it's going to be a night game. But, yes, um, it would have to be. But even then. It could still be very warm. And then the other thing with February 15, think about it. So Easter is normally the start of the WAFL season, and the AFL season starts a couple of weeks before that, mm. generally. But if they're playing their first game as a scratch match, I know, but it's still a game of football on February 15, that is a long bloody year. Yeah, Easter's a little bit later this year, uh, next yeah. year than it was this year yeah. too. Yeah, I know because so, it's around my birthday. Oh, yeah, 31st <laughs> oh, yeah. of March, everyone. Yeah. Tell your friends. Thank you, thank you. Um I, I, the interesting thing yesterday, because the AFL had all the big wigs over, so Laura Kane was in town, yes. uh, Richard Gorder, but he's a West Australian, so he's yeah. the chair of the uh, AFL Commission, and he was here too. And they were talking about the WA can own this time slot as having the Indigenous game being played against, I'd imagine, just be between the two teams, West Coast It's a bit of a Fremantle. consolation prize, isn't it, compared to what Adelaide get with, with Gather Round, yeah. which, is, which is proper season games and everybody there for the for the entire week. So, I mean, it's to say, oh, you can have this consolation prize. I mean, not to say, it would be brilliant to see an Indigenous team because they're, we know that they're such highly skilled players and some absolute superstars in the game. To see them all playing on the one team, be incredible. But it's not the same as an entire round of football being played in the one city. Yeah, I know. And I was kind of looking, so the, the NRL's had their uh, magic round been going on for mm. quite some time. And at the start of the season, they have the Indigenous teams playing uh, up in North Queensland. They're going to mm-hmm. be crowd there. So maybe that they were thinking, well, we can do this in WA. That'll keep them satisfied. Because because the gather round thing is happening in South Australia. What I will say about uh, it's never going to be the same. It's not the same. Yeah, and to even compare it is probably it, doing it, doing both things an, an injustice, to be honest. It's apples and oranges. Most definitely. If we were able to get a big crowd there, 40,000 people or all the like, well, that would be a great success mm-hmm. for the AFL, and they'll probably look to do it again after that. But when it comes to the gather round, the WA government had the opportunity to go against South Australia mm-hmm. and whoever else was in the running there, probably New South Wales and mm-hmm. um, Queensland at that stage, to have a crack at it. And they chose not to. Yeah. They chose to do a whole lot of other events. along. So we've had the yeah. WWE here. We've had and they're coming Coldplay. And coming back as well. Yeah. Yep. We've had Coldplay, things like that along. Yep. South USD. Australia invested yeah. a lot of money, which seemed to be at the time. But then the AFL went, yeah, of course we're going with you. And it's turned out to be the biggest success exactly, of any yeah. sporting thing going yeah, on at that the moment. That has been an absolute yeah. triumph. There's no and, doubt about it. And to it. think the our government or any other governments are now putting up their hand going, oh, yeah, we want what it. About we'll what about now? What about now? No, yeah. you can't do too that. Too late, too little, too late. Yeah. You have a, yeah. 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 You have a swing at the time. And the AFL, in my opinion, they don't have to appease places like West Australia because they had the chance. Yeah. I know. And, and it's tricky. I mean, Adelaide is a is a... Good place for a gather round. I can see why they chose, even if WA had gone through it, just from the, the tyranny of distances, like everybody sure. converging from all corners of the country. You can drive they're, there. they're relatively central. Um, they've got um, uh, smaller grounds relatively close to the city, you know, the ones at Mount Barker and those yep. sorts of things. Whereas we don't have that. Like, you were, where would where would you put some of those? Where are you going to put them? York. Like, do yeah. you know what I mean? Like, Bunbury's two hour, a good two hours away. Yeah. I so, mean, you'd, you'd, play, you'd play in Bunbury. I mean, you can yes. play in Peel, obviously. That's yes. not a drama at all. Yes. They've got the facilities to be able to host an AFL yeah. game. You've got Joondal up, so you can have a game yeah. up there. And Leadville Oval, which I'd use oh, yeah. 100% over. I know, but they're still in the city, whereas yeah. whereas Adelaide and Adelaide have got the, the you know, the wine regions relatively oh, close yeah, to absolutely. the city as well. So it, it, it does, it is suited to that sort of thing, but still. 
It hurts that it's not here. It does hurt that it's not here. And um, I think that the Indigenous All-Stars game will be a good, a great mm. success, and I hope it is, to see some of our great Indigenous players yeah. out there playing um, all together. You and know they what love we should, that, we should pitch for, and we, we held mm. it during COVID, is that Dreamtime match. And, yes. that, and it was they, it, yes. it was a massive success here, yep. and the AFL was surprised at the fact that people turned up. It's like you know we love our footy, and the and the Dreamtime match is a, is an iconic fixture. Why can't we pitch for that? I mean, it w- would require the two teams to to actually agree to it. Well, but... here's the other thing to that is so the MCG can have ninety four thousand people yeah. go and watch and that game. We can have sixty. I know. We just have to double the price of the seats. Yeah, that's it. There we go. <laughs> Solved it. <laughs> All right, money. AFL. They did something, but oh, yeah, a pre-season really match. Come on, mustard. that's yeah. not it's not as much fun. Now. Sean Sport is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.